Abrams X Next Generation Main Battle Tank. What are its new features? Let's see in this video. The Abrams X at the time of the creation of this video is still a demonstrator, so a few things might still change in the future as soon as it's officially put into service. As General Dynamics Land System stated, the Abrams X can be configured based on what the client prefers. And for security reasons, other details about the tank were not divulged to the public. The first thing we need to look at is its overall design. We can see that it still has some similarities with the previous version. The Abrams X still looks like an Abrams tank. The overall geometry design of the hull is still the same. The turret's finish of the edges has changed as it now has a number of bevels, unlike the M1A2 that has one straight bevel. The layout of the turret has also changed because of some equipment added. We'll talk about them later. We can also see that the side skirts of the Abrams X are serrated, unlike the M1A2 which are straight. These serrated skirts are like mud flaps. Because this tank is designed to be highly maneuverable, it is lighter than the M1A2 as it has 60 tons of weight while the M1A2 has 73.6 tons. Engine. Because the turbine of the M1A2 is gas hungry, they have replaced it in Abrams X with a diesel hybrid electric system which includes the electric motor, main engine, and generator. Because of this generator, the Abrams X can use its electronics and optics even if the main engine is turned off, making it so silent. This tank can also move silently using its electric motor, but only in short distances. We know how noisy the engines of tanks are, so it's very important that they are silent so that they can't be heard or seen by the enemies. Also, because of the diesel hybrid electric system, the tank can now save up to 50% of fuel. Although the Abrams X is lighter and has a hybrid engine, its land speed is still the same with M1A2, which is 68 kilometers per hour. The Abrams X is much more maneuverable because it is lighter. Sensors The most obvious sensors are the ones on the turret. Although GDLS hasn't yet named them, they seem to look like one of those Spacio Electro-Optical Surveillance and Fire Control System of Safran. Because of this, the gunner and the commander can scan the battlefield independently without rotating the turret. Next is the distributed aperture system, just like the F-35s. These are cameras installed around the hull of the tank. This gives the crew a 360 degrees situational awareness of the environment as if their sight passed through the hull of the tank. And the good thing is that they see the 360 degree view in their helmet's visor. And because this tank is AI powered, it automatically identifies objects in the environment where the tank passes. A pathway can even be set for automatic pathing so the cruise can focus on observing its environment. Cruise The cruise of the Abrams X has been reduced to three, unlike the M1A2 which has four, the commander, loader, gunner, and driver. There is no longer a loader in Abrams X because the 120mm main gun already has an auto loader. And because there is no longer a loader, all of the crews are not situated in the turret, they are all transferred to the hull. The turret became smaller and lighter because of this. Protection The active protection system used in this Abrams X demonstrator is the Trophy APS of Raphael, but according to GDLS, because the turret has agnostic design, any APS can be installed. GDLS also stated that instead of having two radars and launchers, the Abrams X will have three for 360 degrees protection of the tank. However, this is still in development but it's already close to completion. In terms of armor, GDLS has not mentioned any information except for reducing the heavy armor of the turrets as there are no longer crews inside. But most likely, the Abrams X will have the same armor if not better than that of the M1A2. According to GDLS, Reactive armor plates can still be installed if the buyer requires them. Armament The main gun is still a 120mm caliber 
but with a different gun tube, which is the XM360 gun designed by the US Army as part of their scrapped Future Combat Systems program. This main gun can be equipped with munitions like Armor Piercing Fin Stabilized Discarding Sabot or the High Explosives Anti-Tank Fin Stabilized Munition. As mentioned earlier, this main gun has an autoloader, but the type of loader was not revealed yet by GDLS. GDLS stated that this tank will not suffer the same fate as those Russian tanks whose turrets get blown away when hit by anti-tank munitions. This will not happen to Abrams X as its munitions are put inside a sealed compartment at the back of the turret. It has blast doors which only open momentarily when it loads munition. So, when the turret gets hit and the munitions explode, the explosion will only affect the back panel of the munition compartment and not the entire turret. The problem with the Russian tanks is that the munitions are situated all over and under the turret just like this one. So when it gets hit and the munitions explode, the entire turret gets destroyed as well. It is a design flaw. The secondary gun is different from that of the M1A2. It has the 30mm variant of the M230 automatic cannon equipped on a Kongsberg Protector RE6 remote weapon station. This is used to fire against aerial and ground threats. This RWS can also be equipped with anti-tank missiles like the Javelin or Hellfire. At the back of the turret is where the four launchers of Switchblade 300 munitions are placed. These are suicide drones that can be controlled by the crews from inside the hull. These can also be used as extended cameras to see the enemies until it gets detonated. What do you think? What can you say about this tank? Is this a good replacement for the battle-tested M1A2?